So should you consider a whole life insurance policy before 2022 based on the new 7702 update? The answer is maybe. You know, in recent videos, we've gone over a ton of information around the 7702 change, comparing the old product with the guaranteed rate of 4% to the new product, MEC limits, how guaranteed rates have, impact on, have an impact on MEC limits, and a lot more. And really why we do that is to provide transparency for you if you are considering a policy right now, you've heard good things about whole life insurance. You've heard that, hey, that guaranteed rate of 4% is going away, so I might wanna get in while I still can, but I still have not received enough information or I still don't understand the product enough to make a confident decision. That's why we release all the information we do. This way you can make an informed decision. If you're an agent, you're equipped with the knowledge you need now to then go and educate those that, those that you work with. That's really our company's mission statement. How we drive revenue though, is by working with people and ultimately anyone purchasing a policy with us, that's what helps us grow more than anything else. But of course, our mission statement is transparency and convenience. There's no pressure, nothing like that, because I hate it if it's done to me. So what we're gonna go through in this video is kind of a recap of the past several videos on the 7702 update. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about why the change occurred, how insurance companies are responding, and really what it indicates for the future. So we'll have some fun. So we're gonna compare the old and the new product. And what I wanna start with here is, have you ever gone to purchase a product or a service and you're looking at it, you're starting to understand it, you understand some of the basic bullet points, but not everything, not enough to spend your money on the product or service. But the sales rep tells you, hey, we've only got until the end of the month to make this purchase on this particular product or service. At the end of the month, there's no guarantee that the rates aren't going, aren't going to go up. You gotta make a decision now. When that happens, how do you feel? When I'm in that situation and someone does it to me, I hate it so much because I've fallen for that. <laughs> I fell for that in the past. I'm like, all right, I guess I gotta get in right now. I make the purchase and then find out after the fact that a better option existed. That person just wanted, wanted to rush me in to hit a quota or whatever it was. At least that's how I felt. So as we go through the old and the new, my intention is not to rush anyone into the old product because I see that stuff out there and it drives me absolutely off the wall. I wanna have all the information and make a decision. What I'll start off with here is with the old product, you have until 2022 to purchase. So if you want a whole life insurance product with a guaranteed rate of 4%, that's the first change I'm gonna to touch on here, that's available through the end of 2022. Meaning if you open a whole life insurance policy designed for maximum cash value and it has a guaranteed rate of 4%, you're locked in at that guarantee of 4% forever as long as you don't make any changes to that product. So you do have an opportunity right now to obtain the old product with a guaranteed rate of 4%. That's the number one change. So since the 1980s, before I was born actually, I was born in 1988, the guaranteed rate on whole life insurance policies has been 4%. The guaranteed rate will now range between two and 3.75%, and this depends on the company and the product. So some companies, like we've mentioned in past videos, take Guardian or New York Life, have filed a flat 3% guaranteed rate for all of their whole life insurance products. But then you can take a company like Mass Mutual, and they filed guaranteed rates that range from 2 to 3.75% on their different products. And it is important to have awareness around that, and you're gonna see when we touch on the MEC limits that the guaranteed rates actually have a direct impact on the MEC limits. It's really interesting. But guaranteed rates are going down, which means guaranteed cash values are going down as well. So if you really like the strong guarantees, that would be a reason to consider a policy before the end of 2022. Loan rates. So guaranteed rates are coming down, so are loan rates. On the old products, it's typical to see a loan interest rate typically range between five and 6%. 5% vari variable, 6% fixed. With the new products, we see loan rates ranging between three to 6%. 
Most of them range between three and 5%. I've seen a couple companies still declare products with a 6% fixed loan interest rate, typically a direct recognition in a case where they raise the dividend rate on borrowed funds, but we've got other content on that. Next, MEC limits. So this is the fun one. This is a big change similar to the guaranteed rates. MEC limits overall have come up, but I'll add that since the 1980s, all life insurance companies, the majority of life insurance companies have had a 4% guaranteed rate on whole life insurance products. Meaning if I buy a life insurance policy from company A or company B, that MEC limit's going to be the same if the death benefit's the same. That's not gonna be the case anymore. So to illustrate, if you want a policy with a $100,000 MEC limit, meaning you want the ability to pay, pay up to $100,000 per year, what you would need is a death benefit that gives you a $100,000 MEC limit. So if you've viewed any of our policy design videos, what has a direct relationship to the MEC limit? An individual's age and total amount of life insurance with a 4% guarantee. If we look at a 40-year-old male, I need approximately $2.8 million in total life insurance to obtain a $100,000 MEC limit. That's based on the old product with a new product. Guaranteed rates are different, so MEC limits will be different. This is fun stuff. So, same 40-year-old male, a guaranteed rate of 3% would require just north of $2 million in total life insurance to obtain that same $100,000 MEC limit. If I have a product with a guaranteed rate of 2%, then I need, it's actually a little south of $1.5 million in total life insurance to obtain that same $100,000 MEC limit. So less life insurance obtains being the same MEC limit, which less life insurance often, or I should say also results in a lesser cost. So that does help slightly offset the fact that I have a lower guarantee, which automatically would make me think lower cash values. If I have a lesser expense, that will help offset the lower guaranteed rate as well and help get those guaranteed cash values a bit higher. Won't be as strong as this, which we've covered in past videos, but it's not as if I'm just completely killing the product. With a whole life product, the guaranteed cash value interest rate still exceeds the insurance expenses, so my values go nowhere but up over time. Next bullet point, policy design. I had to throw this in there because this was a big question I had when I first heard about this change, is a 1090 split, for example, with one of the major mutual companies, has that been changed at all? Meaning where I can set the premium and the PUA component, 10% premium, 90% PUA, will that change with the new product? The answer is no. And there are some other minor changes with some companies, like the PUA rider fee with some companies, direct recognition treatment with some companies, things to be aware of. But these are the main changes. And to provide an overview here, if your goal is to maximize cash value, the old product will have stronger guaranteed cash values. We're gonna look at a couple side-by-sides with different companies in a minute here. The new product on the non-guaranteed side has greater cash values. MEC limits have also gone up. But here's what I wanna to touch on. The lower guaranteed rates and death benefits, so the death benefit will be lower initially. Look at those MEC limits, for example. If I'm gonna be able to pay in 100 grand per year, old product guarantee of 4%, $2.8 million in death benefit. If I have a guarantee of 2% now, that's only a death benefit of 1.5 million. If you're the insurance company and your primary objective or your primary obligation, I should say, is to pay out life insurance claims, which one's a sweeter deal for you? This, lesser death benefit. So what this has done is really transferred some of the risk from the insurance company to the policyholder, comparing the old to the new. And we're gonna look at that. It's really interesting when we start to dig into how this has benefited insurance companies or how it's impacted them, this entire change. So let's look at some numbers here. What we will start with is, let's look at a company. We've got the company name up on the board, but we're gonna look at their old product with a guaranteed rate of 4% directly compared to the same product funded with the exact same dollar amount, same MEC limit, but with a guaranteed rate of 2%. So let's get on into it here. What we've got, old on the left, circle that in red, old product, 
guaranteed rate at 4%. $100,000 per year, 40-year-old male, year one cash value is what? $85,000 and change. These are the guaranteed cash values, worst case scenario. Death benefit, we had to overinflate this MEC limit, so it's north of 100,000. Same with this guy, new product, guaranteed rate of 2%. We overinflated the MEC limit, 1.5, gives them 100,000. We're a bit higher than that. But look at this, year one, new product cash value, $86,000 and change. Let's circle the new one in blue, actually. So you've got more right off the bat. This column on the far right, CV difference, is the difference in cash value, the new compared to the old, based on the guarantees in this case, the four versus the 2%. So why on earth, if I have a 4% guarantee with this guy on the left, could I have almost $600 more in cash value? Not much, but why on earth would I have more with a guaranteed rate that is half of the example on the left? The one on the right, that is. Half, 2% that is. The reason why, look at the cost of insurance. The death benefit is substantially less, almost half. Now, year two comes, 176. I've got 200 bucks more in cash value. And then from that point forward, the old one has substantially greater cash values. Now, when do I break even? Old product, year 12. Actually, technically is year 12 because our outlay is higher than 100 grand in this example. But if we just look at the million, I've paid in a million total. Year 10, I have a million dollars in this example. Over here, with a new one, with a lesser guarantee, it's year 12. What's your cash value difference? Let's look at year 15, age 55. The old product has $155,000 more in cash value than the new one. Old one has stronger guarantees. So guaranteed cash values are more attractive in the old product. If we want to scroll down a bit more, let's look at when he's 80 years old. Big difference there. These are guarantees, by the way. So age 80, old on the left, $2.4 million in cash value, death benefit, 3.35. New one, age 80, 1.53, $900,000 less in cash value. That's the guaranteed rate of 4% compared to the guaranteed rate of 2%. Big difference there. Pressure is relieved for the insurance company. Look at the guaranteed death benefit claim. 1.8 compared to the 3.35. So it's good to have awareness on this kind of stuff. So if I'm really hyper-focused on the guarantees, this is a 40-year-old male paying in 100 grand for 10 years, yeah, the old one's better. Let's transition into the new one though. So same product but based on their dividend rate with one of the major mutual companies that have always paid more than the guarantees. They've always delivered strong non-guaranteed cash values, internal rates of return between that three to 5% range. Historically, it's been better than that, but that's something I frequently talk about, that three to 5% range. Old on the left, now we're assuming the dividend rate of 6%, new on the right. Dividend rate still of 6%. Lesser guarantee though. What do you notice though? Look at the first year cash value. That looks familiar compared to all of our old videos whenever I pull up a spreadsheet. New one, bit higher. Lesser life insurance expense, lesser term rider, lesser term cost. That's what helps bump those values. $1,600 more right off the bat. In reality, if an individual wanted to pay in 100 grand per year for 10 years, the new one in the early years would definitely produce more cash value. I don't want to say definitely 99.9% .9 likelihood of that producing more, that's the case. As time passes though, the new products are more sensitive to dividend adjustments. So based on the same illustrated dividend as time passes, this is more attractive. Breaks even, look at that, almost year four compared to this guy, year five. Not bad, old product, 10 pay product. Time passes, new one just pulls ahead. But here's what I'd really like to look at here, or I'd like to, you to keep your attention on. The cash value difference, the new one's stronger and stronger. The death benefit difference though, when does the new one catch up to the old one? 
takes quite some time here. Now eventually it does. Let's go down to 85 or 80 to 85 and see where we're at. So at 80, 5.95, new one, isolating the death benefit, almost 5.8. So the old one still has a greater death benefit. Dividend sensitive, these are based off the dividends as well. The old one is paying a, a higher death benefit. From a legacy standpoint, there's an advantage there. Now as time passes, because that cash value just keeps on roaring over here, look at that thing go. Let's look at 85. New one, 6.8. Old one, about 6.5. So around expected mortality, 85 to 90, we see the new product overtake the old one. Now, will that happen? It's all non-guaranteed. Now, whenever we look at non-guaranteed illustrations, I do emphasize that word illustrations, that it's not gonna happen. Could be better, could be worse. Usually it's a little bit worse. That three to 5%, net internal rate of return on cash value with a properly designed policy with one of the major mutuals. It's what I expect, pre-update, new update, lower guarantees, whatever it might be, I'm still expecting that with seeing how the companies are operating. But let's progress on to a different company. There we go. So, companies up on the left, top left actually, old product, Guaranteed rate of 4%. This company with this product, the new one, has a guaranteed rate of 3%. So not 2%, different company. This is $100,000 for five years instead of 10 years. We did a study too where someone paid in for their whole life, so we've looked at a number of studies at this point in time. Old product, almost there. Based on the guarantees again, worst case scenario, just about year five, look at that. Year six, you're positive, guarantees. This is frankly where you look at the guarantees and say, okay, strong guaranteed cash value. The internal rate of return on this, the annual tops out at about 3.3%, which is a tax-free IRR if I do everything properly. Average gets close to three. Whereas with the new one, what do we notice there? Right off the bat, higher PUA fee with this company, less cash value up front takes between eight and nine years to break even, pretty much year eight, but it's extended looking at the guarantees. Look at your cash value difference column as well. What happens? It's in red over there. That represents how much less I have in cash value with the new product compared to the old product. This way we don't have to try and calculate this as I scroll down. Shall we go down to the same age 80, 85? Let's give ourselves some more space here. There we go. So at 85, what do we see here? Big difference. Old product again on the left. 1.5 in cash value, 1.8 in death benefit. What's your new one have? Cash, almost 1.1. 400 grand less, to be precise, we've got the Delta over here, $412,000 less, that's guaranteed. These are guaranteed cash values, can't make them any worse. Death benefit, 1.285 million. Actually, we could make it worse if we adjusted the health rating or something like that. My point though, like when we do an apples to apples comparison, same company, same product, is if I like the stronger guarantees. If that's a reason why I'm purchasing or putting money in a whole life insurance product, I still have guarantees, but right now I've got that unique situation in history where I can choose the old compared to the new. If I like the stronger guarantees, that's where it makes sense. When I transition to the non-guaranteed values, we see the opposite occur, almost. Up front, which one looks stronger here? Different company, different rules. They've adjusted their PUA fees as well, which sacrifice more upfront with a new product. When we looked at the company funded 100K for 10, year, for 10 years, they did not make an adjustment with their PUA fees. So there wasn't much difference. Here, I see one. Look at the old one on the left. Almost 89% right off the bat. Breaks even between years three and four. How's your new one look? Breaks even year five. Age 40 male, 100K for five years. Have a lot of people with lump sums that like these kind of scenarios. CV difference. New one slower out of the gates. 
I talk to a ton of entrepreneurs that that's important to them. And some people look at that and say, I'm not going to use every penny. But some people look at that and say, you know what? It's an opportunity cost. I can use that to invest in my business or real estate. A lot of times they don't, but they view that as capital that they otherwise would have had access to. Now, that's valuable to someone. Well, we want to make sure we treat their value as, it, as if it's valuable. That's what I would want if I'm the consumer, if you're talking to me about this. If that makes sense. So as time passes here, eventually the new one overtakes the old one. <clears throat> if we go down to the same age 85 here, what do we notice? Old on the left, 2.4 in cash, about 3 million in death benefit. New on the right, 3.1 in cash value, almost $680,000 more, and 3.6 in death benefit because the non-guaranteed potential is greater. So this hopefully has helped you make a decision or helps you make a decision. If you'd like to see a side-by-side -side comparison with different companies and products, feel free to reach out. That is something we are doing. Um, as a company, we made a decision to, de decision to do that. A lot of additional work because we always show a lot of options and it literally doubles it, but we just made a choice to say, hey, if it was me, if I'm the consumer and I really just want to make the right decision and not be pressured into it, I got to see the options. So feel free to reach out to us anytime. Let's close up with what I mentioned before as far as the impact that this is having on insurance companies or why they made this change. So with a low interest rate environment, that's had a severe impact on life insurance companies because a life insurance company, how they drive really the guaranteed rate, but just returns in general, non-guarantees via their dividend rate, is based on where they invest their money. Where are they positioning their funds? And there's been talk now for quite some time that dividend rates have to go up with life insurance companies. And at some point, I would say, yeah, they have to go up. But in speaking with insurance companies, I remember a conversation I had three months, maybe four months before COVID. It was January 2020, and one of the largest life insurance companies in the world speaking to them, and they made a statement, and this is when the new mortality table update occurred and they repriced their products. They said, you know, we really feel that this low interest rate environment is going to remain low for at least another 10 years. Now, COVID has accelerated everything, in my opinion, but this change was lobbied for by the insurance companies for the lower guarantee rates, which really reduce their reserve requirements. Specifically, what that means is when you look at the guarantees and look at that guaranteed death benefit, if you recall that, or you could rewind and go back to those numbers. What did the death benefit look like with a new product compared to the old product based on the guarantees? It was less from start to finish. So again, as an insurance company, now I need a lesser reserve requirement to be able to pay out claims, which really takes the pressure off, helps them tremendously. Now, they're giving it back to their policyholders, banking on the fact that, hey, if things do improve based on the non-guarantees, we're going to give it back to the policyholder. But they've got to protect themselves and all policyholders as a company as well. So it's interesting, really, when you see what's going on. So. They were, they were struggling, they have been struggling as a result of this low interest rate environment remaining low for so long. So that's why the change has occurred. Insurance companies need relief if interest rates stay low. And here's what I want to touch on in the next point. Insurance companies feel that this is going to happen. If they thought that rates were going to start shooting back up, because remember this change, the bill was passed end of 2020, December of 2020, went into effect 2021, and that's why we see the updates now. So insurance companies, they're not banking on interest rates shooting up at any point in time. They're not, and we've got some of the smartest people in the world in terms of finance working for these or partially owning or executives at these insurance companies. So should dividends come up eventually? Yes. But when I look at a product, the new product, they built it to really continue to sustain. 
So it's always a good option. I have the old product. I'm getting more of the old product. I'm planning on it before 2022 comes. And after 2022, I'm going to get the new product. It's not horrible. That's why I'm going to continue to stay in business. I, I like it overall. But naturally, I like the guarantees. That's just me as an individual. But this is the most interesting piece to me. As we always hear about interest rates coming back up, these guys know something. Really, <laughs> really, when you look at it, having their finger on the pulse of really the economy, the interest rate environment, everything. So to wrap this up, as a consumer, lower guaranteed rates, lower death benefits, but higher MEC limits is what you receive as a trade-off. So you can plow more money in, especially if you're capped at a certain death benefit level. I've got other videos that go into detail on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun going through this. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime our team can help with the 7702 update. You can reach out to me directly. Um, I always like talking to, to people. You may have talked to me when you call in sometimes. I pick up the phone. Um, but anyway, please feel free to reach out. And if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe for more. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.